All right, guys, today I thought I would do a fun video talking about how and when I decide to choose different um, pieces of EDC gear, whether it's guns, knives, pens, lights, the works, pry bars, and knives, of course. Um, but yeah, so kind of breaking into a uh, video, kind of like deciding or so basically going over how I decide to pick the gear that I normally run. Now, luckily, this does kind of make a lot of sense for me. And I've done a lot of videos talking about whether it's knives, guns, especially knives and guns, lights, even to a degree, um, pens a little bit less so because they're just kind of like generalized gear. But for sure, when it comes to lights, guns and knives, um, there's definitely a lot more of a thought process behind when it, I decide to carry what. And obviously there are some blades such as full customs, they get a little bit less pocket time because they're a little bit more valuable, a little bit more collectible. But then there's also, you know, more generic knives like this DECA that see a lot more use and abuse because they're a little bit more leaning towards the user standpoint. However, there is definitely a rhyme and reason to carrying things. So first off, when it comes to a lot of my gear choices for things like firearms and knives, especially, and even lights to an extent, it depends on the season. Um, it also depends on where I'm going um, in deciding like what activities I'm going to do that day. So once again, just for instance, like say I want to go, say it's summertime. So as I was saying, you know, um, when it comes down to it, essentially, you know, like let's just say in the summertime, going for a trail run, I'm going to opt for things that are going to be as lightweight as possible. I may not even run something like a flashlight, primarily because here in Alaska during the summer, we really don't actually lose light. So we basically always have light 24 hours a day. Um, that is just kind of a unique thing about Alaska. But anyways, when it comes down to doing something like trail running, very mission specific. And while I do want something like a blade, partly for you know self-defense, but also partly just for its utility, I'm going to opt for something that is very thin, very lightweight, and most importantly, in my opinion, is extremely minimal. So something like this is going to be very thin, very low profile, even thinner than something like this paramilitary two, which is already pretty thin and definitely noticeably thinner than something like this guy. So anyways, that is going to be the first consideration is how can I pick the lightest weight and most minimally invasive uh, gear and part of that is like if you're doing athletic things you're going to be moving a lot so having something that is larger and or has a longer frame just means that it gives you more ability for that um, frame or longer handle to dig into your side so those are things that you have to consider when looking at your tasks and purposes for EDC. And so that is part of the reason why I have many different knives is to select the best knife for different applications. Now, other considerations, once again, are things like climate and times of year and where you're going. So if I was going outdoors in the winter, so if I was going outdoors in the winter, I might end up choosing something like this Strider SNG paired with a fixed blade, like a medium or moderate fixed blade, something like the Falkneven A1 or the Bravo 1 by Bark River Knives. So having something that's a little bit uh, heavier duty or more robust is going to be higher on my priority list. In addition to, especially in the winter, for basically any activities, especially activities revolving being outside, I'm definitely going to be carrying a flashlight and usually for me when I talk about flashlights for the winter time we're talking like serious output like a thousand lumens or more and part of that is I do get some like kind of kickback on you know why do I always choose more powerful flashlights uh, and the primary reason why I like my higher output flashlights for the winter isn't solely because I have more output to shine in a dark area but usually when it comes down to it higher output flashlights tend to have better battery life at lower settings so this flashlight would last at 10 lumens longer than a flashlight that is set up for like 50 lumens right so that is why I like my higher output flashlights, not solely because I have that flex to a larger 
or higher output in lumens, but also to at lower outputs you get greater or usually extended battery life. So that is another reason why I really like my high output flashlights and I feel like that doesn't get enough credit. So a lot of people end up saying, you know, like, oh, you don't need a thousand or 1500 lumens. And it is true for most applications you don't, but don't mistake that you might be missing out on some really good utility by going with a higher output flashlight. So that's another necessity for me. Of course, once again, in the winter, I'll usually bulk up to larger handguns as well, because usually I can get away with concealing something like this a lot easier with coats, jackets, uh, hoodies, and stuff like that on than I can in the summer. But uh, that is another consideration for me. And usually for general purpose EDC, I'm going to choose um, a little bit more of a not necessarily robust or overbuilt blade i certainly have those in rotation and can but usually i will end up picking something that's going to be a little bit bigger and a little bit more glove friendly and that isn't because and that's usually because uh, there is always the potential especially in the winter to have to you know cut things outside especially things like cordage rope stuff like that so it's nice to have something that has a much larger grip surface to hold with bulky uh, gloves and or mittens and so usually you'll see most of the time uh, my preference for general purpose EDC in the winter is to go to larger or longer handled knives it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't carry my smaller blades if there's a specific purpose or reason like say I'm going on a date night or going out to get food at a restaurant you know stepping up to a classier knife of course to meet the occasion would be something I would do and of course that's where stuff like my Gavco Nurse would come into play. Things like smaller flashlights um, like this LD30 would come into play and also just um, like lighter weight things like my pen would come into play. Um, so yeah, that is kind of ultimately uh, how I end up deciding a lot of my gear choices. There is usually a task and purpose behind it. If there is, like, usually there's kind of my baseline, like what I would choose every day. And for my everyday carry, um, that like my baseline, I try to pick the most well-rounded gear. But if I want more classy knives, more classy gear, I have that. If I want lighter weight, slim and trim gear, I have that to lean into as well. But there is always a purpose behind why I choose what I choose and so usually like I said I've done videos in the past covering these different uh, specific purposes or these different kind of larger tasks that would be something that like oh I want to be active and go hiking today that's when you know you're gonna choose something more outdoorsy so when it comes down to picking things every day or for EDC largely it depends on roles and you know what I'm trying to do with that equipment and I think that's something that I've made pretty clear in this video and others but also to kind of ending it or the last point that I want to bring up is that there is a certain level of what I would consider either fizz factor or just personally knives gear and EDC equipment that makes you happy you know a lot of it can come down to and a lot of it you know comes down to personal tastes you know I love these smooth precision pens some people may hate these things but these things are what I really like to write with I prefer and they make me happy and especially when it comes down to things like my knife choices you know I totally think that not everyone will believe that this Gavco nurse is going to be a really cool knife probably some people think it's stupid or lame or they don't like the color purple something like that you know and most of those people are probably just jealous just kidding but ultimately you know it comes down to what makes you happy and what your personal tastes align with and once again you know something like this Chris Reeve knives uh, large and cozy some people may not like its style some people might be like oh I would only carry a Sabenza but at the same time too the Nkosi is a knife that does make me happy it has happiness points or factor uh, to it so you know ultimately there is a certain degree of that when it comes down to EDC some of my most EDC knives like this Hinder XM18 are partly my top choices because I think they look pretty and I like carrying them they're knives that I'm not afraid to show off and be like this is a really cool knife even if the people I'm showing them off to don't know anything about knives you might be like what the heck is that you know why does it look so color 
Why would you spend four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars on a knife? You know, why would you spend so much on these different blades? But you know, at the end of the day, like I said, it really is uh, a passion hobby for me that does make me happy. So that is a driving force as well to my gear selection of what I'm going to carry each and every day. Does it make me happy? Does it make me excited to use it? If those are yeses, then it stands a really high chance of being carried. Anyways, guys, once again, a lot of those points are subjective and they even vary personally day by day. So choosing things won't always be easy, but hopefully this kind of explains some rationale to it. And uh, if anything, if nothing else, hopefully you've enjoyed looking at some really cool gear. Once again, I love this holster. It is really cool too. It is made out of shark and horse leather. So such a cool, such a cool holster for a handgun in my opinion. But anyways, guys, that is all I have to say in this video. As always, God bless and I'm out.